All right, hello everyone. Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com. Uh, today, before we get started, if you head over to my website at FindingMiddleEarth.com, click the big subscribe button in the top right-hand corner, uh, you'll get access to a free 45-minute video on landscape photography going through all my gear and my camera bags. It also uh, hooks you up with my newsletter so that way you guys can stay up to date on my gear reviews, my latest tutorials and video courses, uh, and it's free, all that good stuff. So, uh, let's get started. Today, I'm bringing you part one of my new uh, quick series that I'm doing just for YouTube. It's a new video series that I'm doing called Photoshop Made Easy. And I've, I've wanted to do this for a long time. I've had a lot of viewers request me to do this. The idea is that with every new episode, I'll bring you uh, a brand new quick clip uh, that is just going to show you how to leverage a new tool in Photoshop that you may or may not have known uh, existed. And the reason I'm doing this is because I get so many questions uh, about post-processing and I find that a lot of my viewers, uh, not all of them obviously, but a lot of people are scared to jump into Photoshop because they're just scared of how, how much of a complex program it is. It's got a billion different features, but the truth is, uh, Photographers only typically need to use about a handful of those features. I've been using Photoshop for many, many years, and I still only use about 1 30th of Photoshop's power, probably even less than that. Uh, there's just a lot that you don't need as a photographer. But there's a lot of things in here versus Lightroom or versus Capture One and a lot of other processors. A lot of things that Photoshop can do that those things cannot do, and Photoshop can really help out in these kind of situations. So um, that's what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and get straight to the point, okay? Today, we're gonna be looking looking at how to get rid of chromatic aberration. Uh, one of my favorite ways, most effective ways to do this because your raw processors typically have like an auto correction and 90% of the time that as long as you're using really good lenses, uh, that typically does the trick. But if you have a kind of a, a cheaper kit lens or old film lenses that have that really, you know, gross, dirty chromatic aberration around edges and high contrast points, um, here is a really good way to get rid of it. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. Okay, so uh, obviously this isn't any kind of a five-star photo. I just took this because it's uh, it's going to be a really good example on how to uh, spot out this chromatic aberration. So this is um, all this little green fringing here around the edges. This scene uh, was being smacked, you know, front on with the sun here. It's got these hard edges. Typically anything that's backlit or high contrast around these very sharp edges will have uh, some kind of fringing or chromatic aberration. So you can see, if I keep zooming in, about 500% here, how bad it is. Now, a lot of people at this point might say, hey, Eric, stop pixel peeping, okay? And yeah, to an extent, this is a little bit of pixel peeping, but if you've ever done that, if you've ever not gotten rid of this before and you've ever ordered a print of your work, this just ruins it. It ruins the print, it ruins the image. So um, I like to just nip it in the bud now and get rid of it. So here's what we're gonna do, okay? Let's go ahead and get back to our regular view. Hit Command Zero here on our keyboard. Let's make a duplicate of this layer. So I'm gonna hit Command J on my keyboard. And I'm gonna go up here to Filter and we're gonna go to Blur and Gaussian Blur. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's uh, zoom in, all right, let's go up here. We can zoom in on this little window or we can zoom in here if you want. Let's cancel this real quick and let's zoom in on the actual big image. All right, let's zoom in where that green is, there we go. And then we'll go back into filter and Gaussian blur again and I wanna watch them on the big screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inch up this little radius slider until I see that green fringing just disappear. Okay, so right about there, right around 15, 16 pixels, it starts to disappear. So we'll just say 16.2 looks good, and we'll click OK. All right, now the next step we're gonna do is take uh, the <clears throat> blending mode here for the layer where it says normal, and we're gonna change that to color. All right, and then we're gonna go here to the mask tool, and we're gonna hold option, and then click the mask so that it creates a black mask for us, which basically hides that blur layer uh, and then we can brush that in manually. So now what we're gonna do is make sure the mask is selected. We're gonna hit B on our keyboard to access the brush, all right? Make sure over here that you're painting with a white brush so that we're making the layer active underneath. You can do with a 100% opacity, 100% flow, or ho however you wanna do it. Make sure you're painting with, uh, you know, not a huge brush because this is going to desaturate some of the image. We're just going to do a, a you know, just a moderately small brush here. And as soon as you start drawing on that line, boom, it's like a magic trick. That chromatic aberration just goes right away. 
boom. And you can just keep drawing it right around the edge. Missed a little spot there. And there you go. So you guys get the point. I don't have to do this whole image, but there you go. Look at the before and after here. So here's before and after, before and after. It's pretty amazing. Okay, we'll just do one more example here since I'm trying to make these this video series uh, very quick little clips here. You guys know sometimes I have uh, trouble making videos quick. So this one here is a backlit landscape scene. I'll show you the whole photo again. Okay, and uh, right here, because it's backlit, and we have these sharp edges again, this contour. Look at that horrible uh, purple halo that's around that, uh, that little uh, thing there, whatever it's called. Um, gosh, it's just it's really bad. Even got some on the leaves up here. So there you go. Let's zoom in again. We will hit Command J to duplicate that layer. We'll go to Filter and Blur, Gaussian Blur. Let's go back and let's just inch that in until it disappears. Let's see. So maybe somewhere around 13 to 14 pixels. All right, we'll just manually type in 14. 14, okay, and we'll hit okay. All right, and then the same thing as last time, we'll take the blending mode of that layer to color and then hold option and click the masking tool and B on the keyboard for our brush. Yet again, make sure you're painting with white and you have the mask over here selected. Uh, choose uh, just a moderately small or medium sized brush and have at it. Just start that magic trick. Boom. It, it, it works every time. I love it. And sometimes, you know, if you're, if you're on a, uh, if you're doing this on like a really colorful backdrop, like a really colorful sky, for example, it might desaturate just a little bit of that. So I'll show you how to uh, combat with that in just a second. So let's zoom in. Look at that really bad yellow fringing that just came in. We can get rid of that. Boom, boom. You can see it on the trees here in the background too. We can just take it right out of those trees. Just draw along the edges. It's super easy. And there you go. Now, like I said, this is for really bad cases. On these photos, I did not do any kind of auto correction beforehand in Lightroom or Capture One or anything. I just wanted it to, to be really bad so I could show you that this tool gets rid of the, the chromatic aberration in even the worst of situations. Okay, so there you go. So let's just do a quick before and after. Before, after, before and after. So now, back to what I was talking about, if you were on a really colorful backdrop and it, this tool was showing some kind of bad saturation, you could go into the mask here and uh, on the properties of the mask, you could feather the edge a little bit, which just kind of makes it a little fuzzy and much uh, less apparent. You could feather it, feather it maybe, I don't know, let's just say six pixels. And then you could go over here, click on the layer and crank the opacity down just a little bit. Let's see, keep going with the feathering. Okay, not too much though. There we go. And we probably don't even need to take the opacity down. And then the, the further you go with the feathering, okay, you can see a little bit of that will start to inch back in. But again, we're at pixel peeping standpoint here. You know, if you we're at 1600%. So if we can just go back to even 500%, that purple on the top disappears. And then at 400, 300, 200, it all goes away. And uh, for my experience in printing, which I have quite a lot of experience in printing my own work, typically, if you can see it at like 300%, 400% max, um, then you'll want to get rid of it for the print. But if you have to go into like 900 or 1000%, you don't have to worry about stuff at that point. Now, at that point, it's just microscopic. No one's going to see it on the print um, unless it's something, you know, some big blob that's obviously apparent. But if it's some teeny tiny little thing at a thousand percent, don't even worry about it. We're talking about from a hundred percent to four or five hundred percent max. Uh, then th this tool comes in handy, and uh, it, it will it will shape up your work, and it will make it look much nicer, much more professional, and you'll get great prints out of it. You will never have ruined prints with chromatic aberration. So, hope you like today's quick tip on the Photoshop Made Easy video series. Uh, I'm excited to release the next one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you would like to find out more about me and how you can improve your photography, please check out my premium tutorials at findingmiddleearth.com store.